Hi, Dr. P here at Central Oil University, and today we're going to be distilling some lavender flowers. Lavender, if you didn't know, is a hybrid lavender plant. Uh, the botanical name is Lavendula ex intermedia, sometimes it's referred to, sometimes it's called Lavendula hybrida. Uh, but it's lavender, it is not true lavender. The reason we're going to do this is because we grow this here in Indiana and uh, it's a higher yield than true lavender and it survives the winter a lot better than true lavender. <clears throat> so what I've got here is one kilo of lavender flowers, dried. And this is the latest generation of this stove still, which I've continually modified since 1996, 97. Uh, this version uses a steel vessel uh, so that I could use this very nice uh, inductive heating hot plate. It uh, magnetically heats the water. So the plate itself doesn't get hot, but it uses eddy currents to uh, magnetically heat up the water. It should start boiling in about six, five to six minutes. It's a liter of water in there. <coughs> so just to show you there's nothing else from water in there. I usually just start with one liter of water. <coughs> and then we then put in the kilo of lavender in. Kilo of this material works really nice in this size unit. So it's not have to be really packed down tightly, which you don't want. <coughs> And we'll screw it on the top. Okay. This is our Clevenger, um, which is uh, a, an old device used for small scale uh, hydro distillations. It works very nicely. I've modified it a little bit over what's available from stock glass houses to make this bigger, this bigger, and have a bigger uh, condenser. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> place the Clevenger in this adapter, stainless steel adapter that's made to fit the 2440 ground glass joint. And then we will put the condenser, this is called a cold finger condenser, and we're going to hook the condenser up to a pump. It's a standard garden pump, is all it is, that you can buy at Home Depot. I'll show you what it looks like. You know, 50 bucks at Home Depot. And I've got a very large vat of water here to cool the condenser. So the condenser, uh, the pump is going to go into the water inlet, which is the top tube which goes straight down through the center of the condenser and then back out. And you have an outlet tube that channels the water back into the water reservoir. Now, I usually have to vent the condenser because we don't want it to seal all the way. That would be bad to have a closed system. So I bent it a little bit <clears throat> and basically that's all you have to do for the setup. Now we're ready to start. I'm going to turn on the heat and the pump. As you can see the water began pumping and it's circulating through the condenser coming out here and all we have to do is start the inductive heater and it'll take, like I said, about five, six minutes to start boiling. And then shortly thereafter, the steam from the boiling water will rise up through the lavender uh, flowers, liberating the oil from the flower. It will come up 
the gaseous oil and water will work its way up the tube here until it hits the cold finger condenser. Then it will drop down and collect in the trap. Okay, we're back. Um, it's been about 10 minutes. The water's boiling really nicely now. We're starting to see uh, little droplets condensing now on the sides of the uh, tube leading up to the condenser. And you can really, right up here, from the you can really start to see them collecting up here. As soon as it this reaches equilibrium and this is hot enough to keep everything gaseous for a long enough time to hit the condenser, we'll start to see drops of water and oil coming over and it'll start coming over really at a pretty good clip. At which point we will want to kind of regulate how fast it comes over. We don't want it really coming over too fast because we, then we'll lose some oil off the top. So I'll, I'll moderate the temperature once that starts. But <clears throat> what's going to happen here as the oil and water comes over, it hits the condenser, drops down here. Now the water level, I put a little bit of water down here to, to uh, give me sort of a little buffer so that my first droplets of oil don't end up going back through the sidearm into the vessel. So <clears throat> the oil is going to collect here and the water level will also grow. Once it reaches up to this point, the water then starts to circulate back into the vessel and the, and the oil layer, which will be on top, will continuously grow until this entire trap fills up with oil. <clears throat> and that, at that point, we'll need to drain off uh, the oil and then shut it down, shut, shut the trap, shut the valve and then let it fill up again. We should theoretically get around 5% or so, so we could potentially fill this trap up twice uh, with when we're using Latin then. I don't know that we'll get that yield with this material. It's kind of old and dried, but we'll see. Uh, so as you can see now, the droplets of oil are, are starting to come over. <clears throat> and very soon, it will start to rapidly come over. I don't know if you can zoom in and see anything in there. It's kind of cloudy right now. See the, just the beginnings of the oil layer now forming on top of the water. And soon I'll probably have to turn the heat down. And this color might change. Uh, where it might be a slight yellowish color uh, later during the installation, so you'll be able to see a, a clearer defining point between the oil layer and the water layer. <coughs> there we go. Now it's, it's probably um, a couple milliliters or so forming there on top. Let this go for a little while. Um, check back in when it's, you know, almost full, and uh, see how much we get. We'll take a break right now. All right, we're back. Um, been about 20 minutes, and we almost completely filled up the trap now. So I've got to drain it, or else the oil level now, which you can see, is yellow. Um, will start to come back over and be recycled into the biomass. So we don't want that to happen. So I've got to drain it all off. And over here. Hopefully I don't run out of room in the bottle. I think I'm going to. All right, got it all. So that's basically an ounce of oil so far with a little bit of water. Um, it's not quite an ounce of oil. So we got, I would say, a good 20 ml, 20 to 25 ml, probably 25 ml. 
Yeah, it's at the 25 mm track. That's probably right. So we will then just let that continue to distill. There's probably some more oil left in there. But then we can uh, separate this, the oil from the water, by using what's called a sep, a sep funnel or separatory funnel. And basically, anyone who's had any organic chemistry has used one of these. This allows a nice uh, separation of the oil from the water, as you can see. And then we can cleanly drain this bottom layer off. <coughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna drain off the water layer. Until the oil just hits stopcock. And then I'm gonna save the oil in a separate the water the oil looks a little cloudy and it always does when it's first distilled that will clear up over time as the micro droplets of water pour are pulled out and adhere to the glass this glass is a very uh, good absorber of water. So by tomorrow, if I poured this oil out, it would be completely transparent. So we'll just let that distill a little longer and then uh, see how much more we get. But we shouldn't. I'm afraid to let it go too long because I don't want to burn a, a burned smelling oil. So this represents the best uh, part of the oil that we're going to get. We might get some more out of there, but it's going to be, as, it, as we let it go longer, it's going to be uh, probably worse smelling for this particular uh, botanical. So that's all for this video. Stay tuned as we do more um, in coming weeks. We'll be doing frankincense and cardamom in the future. Hope you stay tuned. Thanks.